I photographed my first wrestling match. And I survived. Here's what I did. Hey, this is Scott Wyden Give with a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. In this video, I'm gonna share how I photographed wrestling matches, what camera settings I used, and how they came out. So I photographed my first wrestling match. Now, I wanna show you the setup I used of, you know, what I used to actually to actually photograph the matches and uh, then show you some of the results. Here's what I used. Basically, this is the Nikon D850 and I had it in continuous, uh, continuous high. So it was shooting really fast. The frame rate is extremely fast on this. Of course, I am photographing in RAW. My camera is always in RAW mode. It is never in JPEG mode. And now, normally, when I when when you learn about photography, you hear people saying, you know, use don't use P mode, don't use the auto modes, use manual mode. And what I'm here to tell you is there is a time, a situation where it might call to use a manual mode, an automatic mode of some sort in your camera in order to worry about the more important parts of the photograph. So when I, I had the camera set up, I actually had it set to shutter priority. Now that is sort of half automatic because it, I am choosing the shutter and it is choosing the aperture. And the way, reason why I did that is I had kids that were wrestling and they are moving extremely fast. They're wrestling, they're flipping over, they're moving around, they're going around the mat and so on. I also had the lens, which is my 70 to 200 F4 lens, and I had it usually between 105 and 200 millimeters. And I know that in order to reduce the shake, even though I have VR on, I need to be at at least 1 400th of a second when I'm at 200 millimeter. My shutter speed was always at a 400th of a second or faster depending on what was going on at the time. The aperture was being decided by the camera. So then what about the ISO? Originally I was thinking that I would actually put the ISO on around 1600 and let it be. But instead I decided to put on auto ISO. And I have my auto ISO set to a range so it can only go so high. And I let the camera decide not only the aperture, but the ISO. And what that allowed me to do is focus solely on ensuring the shutter speed was right so that everything was still and ensuring that my composition was also good. For the focus, I had it on AFC, a, uh, autofocus continuous. And I also had the uh, 3D following, the 3D metrics or 3D meter, uh, 3D focus also in play, which is really good for sports. And I did that so that it was tracking the movement of the two guys that were wrestling at all time. So the camera was doing a little bit of the thinking for me, but at the same time, I was more concerned over the shutter speed because I wanted the good, the good clear focus and I was more concerned over the comp composition. There's a trade-off. Because this was my first time ever going to a wrestling match and also first time ever photographing a wrestling match, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to think about too many things when I'm already trying to think about think and, and sort of anticipate what's going to come next. So when I was actually doing it, I did have my grip on. I have my spider holster grip. I did uh, have this lens, but I took off this, the, the foot over here. I can take it right off just like that. And now I have good control over the zoom. The foot's not in the way at all. I could even spin it around and get it completely out of the way. I could even take off the collar if I wanted to, but I just took that off. Now, of course, because this is the D850, I also had SnapBridge open, which allowed me to geotag all the photos for where this was. And this was actually in Wildwood at the Wildwood Convention Center for what's called the Wildwood Duels, the big tournament. So let's look at some of my favorite photos. I actually did photograph over 800 photographs, but I wanna show you the ones that I picked that are my favorites, which I still need to go through and edit. But for now, you can just see what I actually, you know, what I have. The kid that's in the black is the kid that I'm actually photographing for at this event. And you can see that um, I just got a little bit before photo, got him pre preparing. And here you can see that I'm actually in action. He's wrestling and just sort of keeping an eye on things. Now, the referees were running around like crazy, so you can only really um, I would have had to run around around him in order to not get him in the photos. 
but the nice thing is I could always zoom in and crop if I really needed to. I could, you know, zoom in a little bit and, and crop and however I wanted to do, right? So there's always possibilities to get rid of that guy. Oh, and you can also remove him in Photoshop if you really want to. So I was trying to anticipate what was going to happen. And I could hear the parents and, and, uh, and the coaches start, you know, yelling things. So I was trying to listen and observe and, and photograph all at the same time. Hence why I wasn't worrying about the aperture and the ISO. And, and so, uh, you know, I was trying to anticipate and I caught him lifting the guy up and throwing him on his back and getting points and then, you know, sort of turn for the worse and things change. And then he actually wound up winning, which is great. He wound up winning this match. But uh, you can see the, 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 the anger and, and the, the, the thought process of how do I get out of this? And that was a really cool thing. Now, as you can see, the skin tones are looking good. The exposure is good. There's a little bit of, of ISO noise starting to come into, the, into play, but it's still really good because the D850 has fantastic ISO. And so I was just capturing a bunch and uh, you can see him about to get out of this. As I was watching this live, I was thinking, you know, how do they, does that not hurt their arms getting twisted back and back and back and, uh, and whatnot. And... By the way, I am using a beta version of Lightroom that is not released yet, so um, it's still a little bit buggy. That's why you keep seeing it zoom in and zoom out, but um, Lightroom's actually getting much faster, which is nice. Side note. <laughs> so uh, he's about to bust out of this, uh, this, this hold. He's about to flip him over. He got out of it. He's trying to peel him off of him. And, you know, I've just focused on capturing these great, these great moves and, and the skill that from the from the wrestlers and it's amazing how often their faces get to have to touch that floor when you know there's a bunch of stuff that you don't want to be touching on that floor it's so interesting um so then here there's another period you're starting over I, I also learned how fast wrestling goes how fast the periods go by at least for the spectators probably not for the wrestlers a minute and a half uh each period is, is a a long time and also a very little time. A long time when it's you just wrestling and wrestling and wrestling nonstop. Um, I also love the the uniforms. The they have such cool designs on all the uniforms. So basically, I was just you know focused on the composition, focused on paying attention to what they're doing, and every time a good move was in action, I would hold the shutter down and and you know make sure my focus is good. Hold the shutter down. And, and get those frames in, you know, uh, captured. And there were times where they were sort of struggling. They're both running out of, of steam and they're both struggling to, to get out of a move or whatever that they're just sort of down on the ground and sort of doing one of those wrestling holds uh, to delay time. And those are the times where I'm not taking pictures then because what is the point? You want to get the inter interesting stuff like this, the weird body angles and and look at that, the, what looks so painful, uh, but they're so flexible that they're used to it. Stuff like this, where he's trying to roll him over. Uh, I think it's called a reversal. You can see the, the frustration in this kid's face. He's losing. Now, this kid was uh, was should have been the winner. The guy on the right, who I was actually photographing, was the underdog. And he wound up winning this, this match, which is fantastic. You can see the just the athleticism. Look how flexible and and they're just they're they're both trying so hard. Here's one of those moves where they're just running out of steam. Body is bending in ways that they probably shouldn't be bending in. Just so interesting. Trying to get his uh, arm out. Now this is probably the last match. Oh, they went to sudden death as well. Uh, but so this is this is supposed to be the last period of this one match. You can see the focus. Look at the focus in his eyes. He's he's preparing himself. So here's where he could have lost, but he actually uh, came around and here's where he could have lost, but he actually came around and tied. And because of the tie, he got to go into uh, sudden death, and he, through that, he actually won. First point in sudden death actually wins. And you can see it's almost as if they got their last, the last, um, you know, burst of energy in. Look at this move. I don't even know what that move is, but it's so interesting. Just so, so interesting. 
it was a lot of fun to, to, to photograph this and it was all recorded. You can see over here, there's a bunch of laptops and there's a, actually a camera right here and a little tripod. And they're actually videotaping this for a live stream for any of the parents who couldn't make it to the tournament that they could actually watch it live from home. So I think this is the win right here. This is where he got him to lay on his back and got the point. Referees on the ground, checking it out, and he actually won. And then here's another match. <laughs> this is right before another match. He was goofing around. I saw this on the next on the next mat over. I just thought that was such a, a great sweatshirt to be wearing at a wrestling match. And uh, so I, I just kind of just kind of wanted to photograph it. It has nothing to do with anything besides that. And they're just goofing off. And then getting the pep talks. And so this is a match where he actually wound up losing this match, but uh, this is also another one. This is one where he should have won, but he lost. So he's a little upset at the end, but that's that's how it goes, you know. Uh, sports, I mean, you win some, you lose some. So again, just sort of the same thing, just different different angle, different mat as well, as a different uh, different location. There's 20 wrestling matches going on at once at this tournament. So the first one was at mat 18. This one was at mat two. And you can see again, sort of different moves. He's trying to get him to land on his stomach here by lifting up a leg. But the guys get out of it. They know how to get out of it. Now what was happening here is the guy that's on the bottom right here, his mask, if you look right now, his not a mask, but his ear protection, twisted and it's actually covering his eyes. So we actually can't see. This kept happening over and over again, but no, this is, this is fair game. This is part of it. And it kept happening. He kept not being able to see. He still won. So it goes to show you that sight didn't really matter. And in fact, a lot of the time I noticed the wrestlers have their eyes closed anyway. And that could be focused. I'm not sure why, but I just thought that was so interesting that their eyes kept getting closed. So these are all my favorites out of the 800. And I, I haven't edited any of them really yet. And I, I do plan on it. But I just wanted to share that because I've never photographed wrestling before. And it was a lot of fun to do it. And I wanted to just share really because the camera was half in auto. Again, shutter priority and auto ISO. The rest of it, and of course the, the 3D autofocus, 3D tracking for, for autofocus in AF continuous, in order to ensure that I always had a good focus point on what was actually moving. And of course it's the wrestlers that are moving. So you can, Put your camera into a semi-auto mode if you need to and get out of it when you don't need it, right? Most of the time when I'm doing portraits or I'm doing landscapes, I'm not in any auto. But when you're talking about a situation where you need to be on your toes and not worry about certain things like, like, do I need to bump up my ISO when things are happening so fast? Again, there's three periods, unless you go into overtime, and each period is only a minute and a half. Wrestling matches are very fast, so putting it into a complete manual may not be the best option to photograph a wrestling match. Think about it.